Do you need God to overcome addiction? Well, I'll tell you like this. If I tell you yes, then I'll have to qualify how I'm defining addiction. And if I tell you how I'm defining addiction, then you'll say it's a circular definition, um, which I'm comfortable with because I'm, uh, I'm not here to speak on behalf of um, you know, the medical community or the, the mental health field. I'm, I'm a rabbi, and I'm speaking from a spiritual perspective. That's all I purport to be, uh, to be representing. So um, from that perspective, we're going to define addiction. And every, every community has a different definition of addiction. You'll find you know, the AMA will have one definition, and Webster's will have another definition. And so uh, one definition, which is not my own, it's actually prevalent in uh, the 12-step community and uh, the spiritual model for recovery, which has its origins in uh, psychiatry, uh, Dr. Carl Jung's theories of uh, alcoholism and addiction, which I talk about in the book. But the definition in there is something that uh, inherently cannot be overcome by human power, that there needs to be a greater power, a higher power, something outside of the person greater than themselves. So if that's how you define it, then the answer is yes. Um, if somebody says, well, I have uh, a dependency on chemicals or I have a compulsive behavior and I got tired of it and I said, cut it out and I, and I, and I cut it out. So then that's great. That's fantastic. Um, you, didn't, you didn't need God. You didn't need a higher power. You, do it, you did it from within yourself. So then we would say, Mazel tov, you know, Shakayach. Good for you, and more power to you. Um, I, sh I should note, I'm the last person to tell people that you are hopeless and helpless uh, on your own power and that you need uh, a higher power. It's counterproductive, because first of all, maybe the person can fix it on their own. Second of all, if they can't fix it on their own, the best thing for them to do is be really convinced of that by having tried you know, a million and one times. So my response is always, Try it, do your best, um, but f put forth your best effort. Generally, by the time that I'm speaking with somebody, um, they're already at a point of complete desperation. You know, people don't uh, say, do you think I'm an addict for fun or amusement? It's usually because there's been a lot of pain already. And, uh, or do you think my husband's an addict, or my wife's an addict, or my child, or my, or my parent? Generally, the, the most compassionate response and the most wise response is to acknowledge this person who's coming to you in desperation is probably a pretty smart person, pretty resourceful person, pretty accomplished person, and has had a, you know, some success in various areas of his or her life. And to be able to tell them, you know what, um, I don't think you haven't tried everything. I don't think that there's something that you didn't do enough of. You've probably done everything. You've probably tried above and beyond. You've probably gotten everyone involved in this situation. You've probably put all types of resources and energy and, and of course, money and time into trying to deal with this. And uh, here you are. So, in other words, by acknowledging that the person has really put forth their utmost effort, what you're really doing is opening up the, the idea that, you know what, you know, maybe it's not that I'm not good enough, maybe it's not I'm not smart enough, maybe I am good enough and smart enough, but this is something that I'm up against that's going to take something beyond, beyond me. And, and once you start thinking about, you know, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, I'm capable enough, and yet, for all that, there's something beyond me which I need, that's, that's, that's spirituality. That's that opening to to spirituality. Humility is the beginning of all spirituality. Not because I feel low about myself. No, to the contrary. I know that I have great capabilities, and yet I'm open to something more than myself. That's true humility. That's spirituality.